The AIA Plus 2030 professional series is critical at this particular point in time because the 2030 challenge has been adopted by most professional organizations. Now the states on the entire West Coast uh, have adopted it and are moving to change their building codes uh, to incorporate it. The federal government uh, has adopted it now for all federal buildings, uh, new buildings and major renovations. Um, and so architects and uh, design professionals need the tools to implement the 2030 challenge targets because it's coming in, it's coming fast. AIA Seattle did a, a, a survey of our membership about a year and a half ago and asked them what they really wanted us to provide in terms of programs and what kind of educational opportunities they needed. And at the top of the list was an overriding interest in the, the 2030 challenge and how do we meet the challenge? How do we make our buildings more sustainable? How do we save energy? What kind of strategies do we need in site selection? How do we help our owners understand what kind of strategies we can provide in design? This is the thing that architects are most passionate about. And the more vocabulary and the more tools they have in order to be trained as experts as, uh, in sustainability and environmental issues makes them very much clearer as advocates. Certainly by 2030, if we're able to meet the challenge and our architects are able to rise to that goal, our world will be a very much better place. The AIA has established goals for carbon neutrality by 2030 that sustainability needs to be focused on in a new way, more towards energy reduction and also uh, a real metric to base their reductions on. AI Seattle, along with Architecture 2030 have teamed up to provide this educational program, giving our members, their clients, and some of their engineers uh, that have been involved with it ways to get there. I think that's the most important thing. Um, and trying to make sure that architects can look at their designs early on and talk to uh, clients and builders about how each move design-wise could make a difference one way or another. We don't need to jump to the, to the easy part of just adding more technology. What we need to do as, as, as an industry is go back to basic design. Well, the value of this series is that it's a comprehensive review of all the aspects of design, all the team members that need to come together to really accomplish this goal of the 2030 challenge. And it creates an opportunity for the architects and the engineers to be learning in the room together. And it supports the foundation of how important the partnership is between all the different team members. And that we're not working in isolation, but to really accomplish what we're trying to, to do, we need to do it as a partnership. I see this as the future, very much so. There was so much good work in here that I, I came away feeling like I'd heard it for the first time. The graphics are beautiful, the presentation's beautiful a very compelling speaker. If there's something we need to learn, it's that we need to relearn. Most importantly, architects consider themselves part of the solution. It, it can't be as simple as just adding photovoltaics to the roof. It can't be as simple as just, you know, fluorescent light bulbs. And so the, the architectural challenge, the design challenge, is one which is very new uh, in the last 30 or 40 years, and that is, uh, how can we do without? And that's design. We need to find ways to empower design professionals everywhere to be able to take on the challenge. And particularly the architects, I think, who have a, a unique opportunity to, to become leaders in the field. We want to support them in doing that. We're all trying to, to uh, solve the same problem and to be able to come together with colleagues within the profession that are um, all working towards similar goals and have the opportunity to have the hands-on workshops here where we're actually sharing ideas and, and uh, learning from each other as well as bringing in these experts uh, from around this region and really around the country. That's something very unique, um, something that it's very difficult to get in such a concentrated way. This series uh, is certainly giving us the uh, know-how to uh, speak with our clients, work with engineers, uh, work in a collaborative way um, as a team on projects to, to achieve these goals. There's only going to be more and more emphasis placed on the necessity to reduce the impact of a building construction and building operation in coming years. This series provides a look at what's being done now at the forefront of solving some of those problems. It has tremendous value 
to the profession as a whole. And I think that's the cross-fertilization between the different firms and disciplines that I think is really valuable. I was able to bring back some of the ideas about integrated design and especially about energy targets. We started uh, implementing some of these ideas and strategies right away. We've already started the discussing energy targets with our owner and with our consultants um, so that we can set goals for the project very early on. Anyone should take the series who wants to expand their knowledge about sustainability and learn ways they can apply it more effectively in their job. You might be surprised at some of the things that you learn. It's, it's not just about the tools that you learn here, but about meeting the people that are lecturing here. They're some of the best and the brightest that are in the industry. And so just being able to connect with them and uh, use them as resources is uh, invaluable. There's tools and, and tips that I've learned in here, and then there's also resources, people that I've been connected to from the lecture that I can draw on in my work. In terms of the future of architecture and how this fits in, I mean, I think this is the future, and it's, in a large way, it's pretty much arriving here right now. You know, we're seeing changes in building codes, we're seeing changes in what clients want. We do a fair amount of government work, and so there's a lot of changes in the, you know, the standards that are being applied to buildings, and I think that, you know, there's a bit of a lull in, or a big lull in commercial activity, commercial residential activity right now. I think people are going to be surprised once that activity level picks up again what the en environment that they're in, in terms of building performance, what the environment is like, how different it, it, it's, it's going to be from sort of the last high level of activity. And I think this really helps prepare for that. But it is important, extremely important. I've spent a long time working on trying to make reduced energy use in buildings because of its huge environmental impact in every single AIA chapter ought to be doing its share or more so because buildings are the culprit. It's a big problem. It's going gonna, it's gonna, to, in my view, um, certainly dramatically change the characteristics of life on Earth, especially as people. We can do buildings that easily use about a third of that, and we can do it at no economic penalty. It's stupid not to do buildings like that.